Hello everyone. To kickstart our unit on genetics and DNA, we're going to talk a bit about prokaryotes and eukaryotes, biology central dogma, and also a couple of kinds of nucleic acids. You may remember from fall term that there are four major kinds of biological molecules, which we call the big four. If you remember from fall term, the big four are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. All of these are what we call macromolecules, meaning that they are made up of smaller subunits. Carbohydrates are made up of three types of atoms, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they're usually easy to spot because they have two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. A carbohydrate that you're probably familiar with after our talking about it over winter term is this one right here, C6H12O6. Hopefully you also remember that we call this molecule glucose, which is a sugar. Since glucose only has one ring of carbons, we call it a monosaccharide. Something like cellulose shown below is what we call a polysaccharide, which has many rings stuck together. Because of its complex structure, it's very difficult for humans to digest, which is why eating beans, which contain lots of cellulose, tends to make you fart. Proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, and they have many different functions, all of which are related to their structure. Just a few examples of the roles that proteins play are that they can perform storage, they can act as hormones and signaling devices, and they can also be enzymes, which we learned a lot about during respiration and photosynthesis. Proteins are made up of very long strings of amino acids. There are 20 different kinds, and the order of the amino acids determines exactly what kind of protein you're going to have, in addition to the way that the protein is folded. Remember that a string of amino acids that has not been folded yet is called a polypeptide because the connections between the amino acids are called peptide bonds. Once the string of amino acids has been appropriately folded into the correct shape, we can then call it a protein. Lipids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They consist of a glycerol head with multiple fatty acid tails. Now, if you remember from fall term, we have two different kinds of fatty acid tails, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fatty acid tails can hook up right next to one another like this and form very, very tightly knit groups. This is why butter, which is a saturated fat, is solid at room temperature. However, unsaturated fats, like this tail on the right, don't quite line up with the others. This is why fats such as olive oil are liquid at room temperature. The key difference between saturated and unsaturated fats is the presence of this double bond right in the middle of the unsaturated fat. The double bond causes the tail to kink, which prevents it from linking up with the other chains. Lipids form many different roles, including hormonal signaling, but they also provide a quick source of energy in case it's needed. Nucleic acids are the member of the big four that we spent the least time on this fall, which is why we're coming back to it now that we're talking about genetics and evolution. Nucleic acids have an extremely complex structure and are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. The two major types of nucleic acids are called DNA and RNA, and we're going to learn a lot about what differentiates the two of them and also what makes them similar to each other. The main reason that we have nucleic acids is to transmit genetic material from the parent to the offspring. This last point is going to be key as we learn about what we call the central dogma of biology. The central dogma of biology explains exactly how parents pass on genetic information to their offspring and exactly how those instructions are carried out. DNA contains a unique genetic code. This code is the instructions for how to make a single-stranded molecule called RNA. RNA, in turn, is the instructions for how to make proteins, and it is the specific combinations of proteins that are present in the offspring which allows them to look similar and behave similarly to their parents. Now this may seem like a roundabout way of passing on genetic instructions, but we'll understand it better once we look into the specifics of how DNA replicates and how it's passed on its code from parent to offspring. An adult human body is made up of roughly 37 trillion different cells. However, no matter where the cells are found in the body, every single one of them carries the same genetic code, which is unique to that individual. Because every individual has a unique genetic code contained within their DNA, this is why we can do DNA matching at crime scenes no matter what kind of cells the perpetrator drops. Most frequently, criminals tend to leave hair or skin cells behind, but we can also derive DNA from blood cells to match with a criminal background check. 
This system wouldn't be possible if every cell in the body had different DNA. Most plants and animals have what we call eukaryotic cells. They have membrane-bound organelles, including a nucleus with distinct DNA contained inside. This is a really basic drawing of a eukaryotic cell, which contains a nucleus, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, vacuoles, and other different organelles. The DNA is contained in the form of chromosomes, which are found within the nucleus of the cell. DNA is normally a double-stranded molecule, but it can be coiled very tightly in order to occupy less space within the nucleus. This structure at the bottom of the screen, which is shaped like an X, is actually what we call condensed DNA material. The molecule of DNA is wound around small proteins called histones. This coiling around the histones allows the DNA to take up less space and to condense into what we call a chromosome. The chromosome is pinched together in the center by a structure called the centromere. Each side of this letter X is actually called a chromatid. Just about all plants and animals have this type of cell. Prokaryotes carry their genetic material slightly differently. Prokaryotes, if you remember, include things like bacteria. Prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles within their cells. Instead of having chromosomes, they have a circular portion of genetic material called a plasmid. When prokaryotes reproduce, they have no opportunity to shuffle around their genetic material, which means that every offspring is an exact copy of its parent. While this does make the reproduction process a lot less complex, it also means that the parents and the offspring will both be vulnerable to any kind of genetic disease or mutation that comes along. They will not have the opportunity to make any changes that might help avert this. That's it, folks. See you in class.